Alright, welcome back to Rogue Tech, and welcome back to your first playthrough. So today should actually be a quick uh, quick episode. <laughs> so uh, here's the plan. I already sketched things out so I could do this very succinctly and very quickly. We have 19 days before the line holders finished, 19 days before Calcifer, Bushwhacker, Firestarter, and Stealth are finished, and 19 days to the financial report. So after the financial report, we have two days before we arrive in Yangtze. Which means we're going to click play. We're going to wait. And the ship training module 2 will be finished. At which point we are going to prioritize some mech tech. Um, <laughs> because we're going to be dropping our missions needing to repair and then still be knocking out... Uh, <laughs> refits and trying to get other chassis up and running so what we're going to do here is we're going to build the library because it gives us a tech point and two morale it is going to cost us 200,000 which should be fine and yeah completion of 10 days cool so it will it will finish the day after we arrive at our travel destination. We still have enough for the financial report, so let's go ahead and roll through it. Oh. Okay, so. This is one of the, uh, one of the dangerous, <laughs> one of the dangerous events that can pop up. Um, so. Oh boy, our injured mech warrior Our injured mech warrior is insisting that she feels like she's dying. Wait. Wait, she's not the injured one. Right? I thought Hellion was the injured one. Huh. Okay, so apparently this can happen when they're not injured. Um... Yeah, no, it's a different one. It's a different one that is... Uh... Actually, I think they could still die in this one, but... Okay. So, if we order the med techs to perform exploratory surgery... I believe this reduces your med tech until the next financial report. And may also cause Rusalka to be injured. If you refuse to authorize any examinations, she can die. I'm pretty sure. And if you authorize a second medical examination, I assume it's a lesser amount of medical, uh, but there's probably still a chance she can die. I'm gonna go ahead and order the performatory surgery. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's fine. We weren't going to drop on a mission in a week anyway. And that's actually like way better than her dying or being injured or us losing med tech because I think that we still do have uh I think we still have Hellion injured. Or maybe not. Let's look. So, good job, Rasalka. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, is it because she's cautious? She wasn't injured. There was, there was nobody injured. Because she's the only one showing not... <laughs> okay. I, I was worried it was the one where if they're injured, then they can just outright die. Um, I don't know what the outcomes of that one are, actually. I don't think. You know, there might have also been a chance that she might have lost the Cautious or Jinx tag or whatever. Because there are events that can remove a tag. And I would I would have been very sad if she had actually lost the Cautious tag. Because she is very good at 
piloting a VTOL and not getting hit. So, kind of want to keep her doing that. Anyway, right, so we have six days until the financial report, six days until the line holder's up, six days until Calcifer's up. But actually, we can go ahead and do the two things that I had planned out. So, first thing, the stealth. We want to put... We want to put... A, the cockpit components that make the melee better into the mech. Uh, we can't put the cockpit hot seat yet because the cockpit hot seat requires slots and the endo steel is going to need to be replaced by the clan endo steel for us to be able to have the slots to put in the cockpit hot seat. Also, we don't have a lot of time. We're only going to have two days to work on this. Then again, actually, we're not going to be able to build the line holder once it's done repairing. So we don't actually need to finish repairing it before we arrive. So we'll come back to the stealth. Let's, let's go to the fire starter and do what I sketched out, because this is the one that I took time with. So we're dropping double heat sink and the jump jets. All right. We're going to leave the flamer, because uh, why not? Uh, and we're going to confirm this to get these out of here with zero days spent, because I think if we do other stuff in addition to that, we'll have to actually spend a day removing that stuff. So, with that out of the way, we're going to start off jumping over to internals and adding the chameleon LPS, because we're going to make this thing into a filthy little backstabber, and filthy little backstabbers love being stealthy. Especially when their filthy little backstabbing has the range of the AP Gauss Rifle, so we don't have to be right up behind somebody. We can actually flank well around them and get behind them and shoot them that way. In any case, um, yeah, then we're going to go down to the Fire Control Mark II, which gives Evasion Ignore and Breaching Shot, but we're not going to be reusing Breaching Shot, and the Plus One Gunnery is neat. We already have the comm suite, which I didn't even realize it had in it, I don't think. <laughs> which is plus one tactics and bonus resolve generation. Then we have the sensor totem, which reduces the resolve cost of mech warrior skills. So we're definitely leaving that. And we're going to be able to offensive push, which, with the AP Gauss rifles, even though they're splashy, if we offensive push from the back and hit side or center that's open already we can cluster at least the first crit and possibly the follow-up crits based on our clustering rolls into the location that's open and possibly cause boom. So, uh, we're not able to use the defensive gyro because it's an omni mech, so the omni gyro is locked, the engine XL is locked, the engine core is locked, we can't do anything about those. Um, but what we can do is we can go down to where is it? Where is it? There we go. Battle computer ballistic. Uh, we're also going to put in a beagle probe. So it's getting an ECM shield from the Chameleon LPS. In addition to the stealth and the mimetic stealth, it's also getting an ECM shield of four and reduces enemy jamming by four. So... It's also pretty solid on electronic warfare. Now, it does generate a ton of heat. 20% additional heat from weapon fire and 15 heat per turn when active. So, we're going to offset that a little bit by using... Where is it? Uh, the Exchanger Double Plus. And so that should offset the majority of the heat the Chameleon LPS generates. In addition to that, we now need to put weapons in. And you'll notice, yeah, it's almost a half million, or it's, it's a half million sea bills, but it's only one day. So far. Because this is an Omni-Mech. And with an Omni-Mech, you, you can just drop equipment and weapons in and out very freely, very easily, very quickly. The only reason it's half a million is because of the Chameleon LPS. Like, that is the expensive part. Actually, I think that's literally all... Yeah, that's literally all of it. So, that's the expensive part. But it's fine. Um, I think that's everything here. And I believe now we just go straight to weapons, right? Looking at my note. Yep. So now we just go straight to weapons. 
And we're going to start off. We are going to put the AP Gauss Rifles in, but I decided instead of going all in on the AP Gauss Rifles, we're going to use five AP Gauss Rifles with the one bin of ammo that should give us ten Alpha Strikes with the AP Gauss Rifles. But we are also able to bring a pair of SRM-6s and an SRM-4 Valiant. In addition to Inferno ammo and standard SRM ammo. So now, if we're backstriking, we have the bonus crit on the SRM-4 Valiant to go along with the bonus crit from the AP Gauss Rifles, but we also have just 120 damage worth of SRMs. <laughs> and then if, if we are against somebody in a hot biome or who's running hot or we just feel like turning up the heat, we have a Flamer and we have 16 SRMs worth of Inferno. Yes, we could drop the Flamer and we could turn the SRM-4 Valiant into an SRM-6 to increase the amount of heat. And also increase the damage a little bit because the SRM-4 Valiant does do less damage. But this thing is a crit monster. And yeah, I, I would rather have the crit chance from the SRM-4 Valiant. We can move stuff around later once we've got all of our mechs built. But for now, that's the way to go. And we're going to drop the mag shot ammo in so we don't have to come back to this screen. And then we're going to go down to the AP Gauss Rifles, and we're going to put in one, two, three, uh, four, and five. So we are now at 44 out of 45 tons. We do have two slots left. Our heat efficiency... What'd I do wrong? Oh! Yeah, that's kind of important. Double heat sink kit. Boom. So now we actually have the cooling that we need. There we go. Heat delta, negative 28. Which, again, the Chameleon LPS is an additional 20% from weapons fire and 15 flat. So... We're still going to have to be a little cautious with our heat, but it's manageable now. And with the extra one ton, we're just going to armor up our shield side to see about trying to not lose the mech while we do stuff. <laughs> we do have the option at a later time to move stuff around. We might end up again putting the SRMs onto the line holder or something. But for now, the fire starter is going to be Calcifer's little battle buddy. We're going to run them in and we're going to cause havoc and <laughs> havoc and chaos. Yes, it's only a 6-9 movement. I would like it to be faster to be the SRM boat. Uh, the AP Gauss Rifles actually have a max range of 480. Yeah, they have damage fall off, so you want to be within 240. But, uh... Yeah. We're, we're going to try to get in close. Um, I also would like to, you know... Put in something along the lines of... Uh, Case 2, um, a mask would be pretty cool since I can't increase the engine core size, but for now, in two days' time, this is going to be a droppable mech. And then once we're done, or once we decide to change the mech build up, we can easily shift stuff around and, you know, move the AP Gauss rifles maybe to another mech, or if we get more, if we get more mag shot ammo, we can replace some of the other weapons with more AP Gauss Rifles, because we do have, I think, two more? Yeah, we do have two more. So if we get, like, a half bin of mag shot ammo, or one more bin of mag shot ammo, then we, we could run all seven AP Gauss Rifles, at which point we can move the SRMs. To, there's a lot we can do. There's, there's a lot we can do in the future. But for now, this, in two days, is what we're going to... Uh, actually, real quick... We do have, ah, uh, that's, yeah, that's 2 point, what, 2.7? Yeah, never mind. This is 3 tons. I thought we had 3 tons because math, but no. So, yeah, this is how we are building it, and this is what it's going to look like in 2 days. So, validate that, and now we need money. But it's fine. It's fine. We're going to just go over to the stealth real quick. Uh, actually, wait, before we do this... 
Manage task. Okay, Calcifer is the highest priority, as is the Firestarter. We're going to arrive in eight days. The Urban Knight can actually... The Urban Knight can be dropped quicker than the Line Holder. So I think all we have to do is put an Engine Core in and we can technically drop it. So we're actually going to prioritize the Urban Knight and Calcifer. So in six days, we hit the Financial Report. Then we have two days to arrive. In that two days, the Firestarter will be finished. So we also want the Stealth to take no more than two days. And since we don't have the time to do all the thing, well, instead of getting the Urban Knight droppable, we okay. Let's let's just let's just look. Pilot A, Fire Control, Bloodsport. Um, the do 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 cockpit hot seat requires the Clan Indo because it needs slot. No, not that one. That one because it needs slots for the TSM. Then we also have the combat shield, and we also have the Vibro Sword and the piloting B. And I think the Vibro Sword actually generates heat. Um, 14 heat per turn. So we need to be able to do something about that heat. Because we also have the Stealth X, which is increasing our heat generation as well. But uh, we weren't able to use the 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 heat uh, the the Exchanger Double Plus wouldn't have worked because it takes forty percent of your carry capacity. So with the cockpit hot seats times two carry capacity, we wouldn't have been able to have the combat shield and the Vibra Sword. Now this is four days. Four days is manageable. 134,000 sea bills. Yeah, that's fine. We can. I think we can manage with that. So, uh, Clan Glaze. What was Clan Glaze again? Um, right. Increased resistance to energy. Reduced resistance to ballistic and missile. Which is fine. That's fine. Um. <laughs> So, the air small laser is half a ton. That doesn't help us. Not really. I mean, yeah, it's eight heat. That just not firing it does help. I mean, I'm trying to think of like, is there anything we could use for half a ton? Uh, no. We got a Beagle probe. We got a Guardian ECM. Yeah, no. Warfare Sweet Quick Cell, definitely not. Because, like, we could drop some tonnage by swapping the Guardian ECM and the Beagle Probe for something less. But we really want to hit. <laughs> Especially with the Virus Sword, with the Cockpit Hot Seat, double, uh, f increasing the damage by 50%. That's pretty good. Yeah, so 45 tons should be 14 base damage. Huh, and then an extra 35. Okay. I mean, the cool part about the weapon instead of punching is that it's going to be a single strike that's going to do damage to a single location. Ah, okay, so when it's active, it's 14 heat per turn. When it's not active, we just don't do the additional 14 damage and four stability damage. Okay. Also, we get plus two accuracy on a physical weapon attack, so that's that's going to be a good time. Um, so yeah, I can't think of anything, like, with half a ton that I could really... Uh, I mean, it's less heat. It is less heat. 
But we're already at four days. Let's just leave it as is. It's fine. I could also... Okay. If I drop the B-Pod, I could also put on the Bolt-On Rockets times 10. I mean, Bolt-On Rocket 10 times 3. And we don't really want to go up and melee any battle armor with this thing anyway. So that's better. Um, also, Rockets generate zero heat, so that's cool. And... Yeah, I think that's that. We'll see how the heat looks with the Vibra Sword off whenever we're moving and on whenever we're attacking with it. Uh, we also do have the option of turning the stealth off to save heat. But uh, I think the big thing is the Snub Nose PPC. We, if, if we struggle with heat, we're probably going to have to replace the Snub Nose with something else. But what? Because we don't have... Yeah, we just have the Ballistic Hardpoint in the head, the Support Hardpoint center, and the Energy Hardpoint the Snub is using. So I don't think that's... I don't think that's much of an option. So we're just... We're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna see. Um, so if we had a exchange... Yeah, let's, let's... We're gonna commit to this for now. Uh, but let's look at the Bushwhacker real quick, because the Bushwhacker has a regular exchanger, which is 20% of the carry capacity, so we could put a regular exchanger in, and since the exchanger double plus was 40% carry capacity, that means the 30%, that's the exact amount we have after the combat shield, the stealth X, and the, uh, the Vibro Sword, is 30%, so we would be able to use an exchanger plus. And either Exchanger or Exchanger Plus would completely negate the heat problems that we are likely to run into. Regardless, we're going to bump Stealth to the top. Because the Stealth is the most important. Um, so is Calcifer. And then the Firestar. So now, when we arrive, after our eight days of travel, Calcifer and Firestarter will be done. Stealth will be done. And Urban Knight will have, what, one day? Oh, uh, wait. Six, five, seven. So... Yeah, it's going to be like two days on the Urban Knight and one day on the Line Holder or something like that. That's fine. But obviously, if we go over the financial report while we're in the negative... Or, you know, while we're below the uh, required amount, we would go bankrupt. So, time to scrap things. I really do want to experiment with the battle armor, so I'm going to leave those. Uh, I like Mantis. Like, I, I like VTOLs. I really do. Even though it's, a again, 220 armor. Not much, but the idea with the VTOLs, you just don't get hit. I'm never going to build a fleet. Ooh, that's only 2,000. Ooh, okay. We might have problems. Uh, Wasp Quick Cell, there's 35,000. That helps a little. We've got half a million that we need to get. Can we actually... Oh, no, we can't. There's, there's no way. Okay, we're going to get as close as we can. Yeah, I'm never going to build the CX, right? I am only one part away. Oh, it's a... S okay. It only has 280 armor, and it's not a VTOL or a hover tank. So, I am going to scrap it. In part, just because I need the C-bills. Um, we do also have the option of stopping work on one of the things we're repairing, if we can't get anywhere close. Uh, Locust... Actually, I think the... Wait. Yeah, it's a primitive downgrade. Yeah, so the pink is the primitive. Don't care. Um, we need the Kabuto parts to build it, because we might get something interesting. Goodbye, Flea... Uh, Scorpion, LRM-15 and 440 armor is not, not bad at all. Uh, Mobile HQ, LRM-10, resupply repair, and it has the battle computer. I think it can also sensor ping, so don't really want to get rid of that. Locus 2C is Clan Tech, don't want to get rid of that. 
Harasser, uh, it's a hover tank with 120 SRM damage. But, it's also only 170 armor total. So we're gonna sell it, in part because it's money. Um, we're getting close-ish. But I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna start scra scrapping 30 ton stuff. And I think the Dart 3S, I think it is just base tech, so I can scrap that. The Cephalopod, or Cephalus though, that thing, that thing has a lot of really good stuff. So I think that's, I think that's the end of what I'm willing to scrap. So we need another... 351,000 sea bills. So, yeah, we're going to stop work on... That's not enough. That's not enough. Okay. So, I guess we stop work on both of them. Okay. Uh, that's fine. You know what? We still need to build the Phoenix Hawk. We still need to build the Line Holder. We still need to actually build the Urban Knight instead of just have it repaired. So, yeah. I think I think I'm fine having just four busted mechs. <laughs> and an Irby that's not ready to drop. And a Phoenix Hawk that has, like, next to no weapons on it. Yeah, yeah. This is fine. Everything's fine. Completely fine. So we're going to have the Bushwhacker, the Stealth... The Incubus and the Firestarter. And then the two vehicles. I was expecting to be in better condition by the time we arrived. Early game. Early game, you really can't afford to do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could also just, like, scrap the Locust. There's no way I ever put time into rebuilding this, right? It only gives us 39,000. But it also might reduce our financial report. Yeah. Reduced our financial report by like 6,000. Okay. So now we're safe and comfy. Uh, worth noting, when you're jumping, so when you're attached to the jump ship, every time you jump, you pay then. So if you're attached to the jump ship and you've only got 20,000 sea bills to your name, the next time it jumps, you go bankrupt. So, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's just get on with it and... <laughs> let's, let's work on arriving. I think we're fine, right? Pretty sure we're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I think we have to stay extravagant to actually get the stuff done in time. But it's fine. We've we've got a full financial report, basically. We're going to arrive on the planet in two days. So it's fine. Yeah, we're going to we're going to arrive on the planet and then be completely fine. Let's go ahead and look at the store. We've got 300,000 sea bills. We can maybe buy something. More bolt on incendiary rockets. That only take one ton. We do have the specialist slot to put Volta incendiary rockets. We do have the one ton. Interesting. I think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I think I'm going to. Uh, large laser, laser cutter, medium laser, Artemis for attachment. Requires Artemis ammo. AP machine gun ammo. Interesting.
You know what? This store is going to be here. Well, then again, we would need one of these per weapon. So if we have an LRM boat, and we have, say, two LRM 15s, we would need two of these for all of the LRMs to be Artemis. Likewise, if we want to use it with SRMs, each SRM would need one. So, yeah, even if we are able to get more, absolutely love, love having that. Love having that. Okay. And then before we jump into our first mission, we're also going to look in the hiring hall. Hey, it's Jelly Roll. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> That's an interesting portrait. Good old Rudolph. Um, so we've got athletic, plus one bonus health, faster fatigue recovery. Cool. Honest, bonus morale. Okay. Merchant. Okay. Dependable, minus 5% stability taken, improved panic resist, plus 20% lance resolve generation? What? <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't care that we like can't afford. We're gonna we're gonna grab him. Uh, military, athletic, noble, wealthy. So wealthy, he's gonna be fatigued longer, but he also has half the upkeep a regular pilot of his uh, skill level and you know uh, quirks would be. And he is military, mech warrior, and athletic. So, yeah. Welcome aboard. And then we don't have enough for... Uranos. Um, so, plus mech tech. What? Wait. Plus 40 affinity granted to all chassis. So we can just put him on a mech and immediately get whatever they have at 40 affinity. Punch kick damage, plus two punch attacks, always destabilizes on hit. So he's not, he's not good for our stealth with the sword. He's not good for the urban mech with the sword. But if we put him on something else and have it punch. But what else do we have that we would really be punching with? I mean, the fire starter, maybe? No, it only has lowers. The assassin has one hand, one lower. The incubus has hands. The clan cockpit components give it gunnery, though, but, I mean, sure. Uh, I mean, I... Can lambs punch, or can they only kick? I don't know. Haven't tried a lamb since the handheld rework. Uh, fire starter, we're not punching because so many weapons are in the arm. Same with the phoenix hawk, and then... Yeah, uh, this incubus... I mean, this incubus could punch. Right? Left arm is a tag. Right arm is a single flamer. It could punch, but, uh... Yeah, I think, uh, I think either the other... <laughs> the other Incubus or the... Does the line holder have hands? You know what? We're gonna hire him regardless, because that's a very interesting melee mech. Uh, specifically, punch mech pilot. And the plus, I, I want to see how this works. I want to see if he just, like, gets the affinity bonus as if he had 40 more affinity than he actually does. And he's going to be expensive, but it's fine. If we don't like how he works, we can just fire him and be out 80,000 C-bills. And then Zombie 6, military, honest, dependable, lucky, mech warrior. Sure. Sure. And Thunder's just a vanilla non, uh, non-Ronin, so... Probably not super interesting. Although he can pilot vehicles. 
That is something I didn't pay attention to whenever I was hiring the other people. Yeah, but all he is is dependable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, pop over to the barracks. We're about to drop on a bunch of missions uh, before the next financial report. And actually, I'm going to wait till next time. And we're gonna we're gonna go through the barracks. We're gonna hire peop uh, skill people up, and then we're gonna jump into the mission. So, for now, that's been your episode of Rogue Tech for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.